This is the recent 4K UHD release of Ridley Scott's 1991 classic Thelma and Louise. I think it's another great 4K release, but how well does it stack up to what has gone before? Let's take a look. It's a very nice pack from Criterion, the box, the pack containing the discs and a little book all about Thelma and Louise that I haven't had a chance to look at yet. Three discs in the pack. There's the film on a 4K disc, the Blu-ray, which has a couple of extra extras that aren't on the extras Blu-ray, but everything I think on this extras Blu-ray has been seen before on what came before, which was the previous or the original Blu-ray. I'll get more into that, but I'm a little conflicted in places as to which is the better disc, because some scenes that I've looked at tend to look better on the Blu-ray, but in the main and most, nearly all of it, looks best on the 4K. I think to summarise this, this is a difference between an original negative Cine to video transfer and all the additional work that goes into all these restorations now, which is also evident on the Blu-ray, but you just haven't got that natural colour of the original negative being transferred to a master print or a general release print. The Blu-ray is a bit more like a video, but take nothing away from that. It is absolutely superb when you compare it to the 4K. It's just you switch between the two and at times you think, oh, I prefer the richer colour on the Blu-ray, but it's actually too rich. Skin tones are quite often too brown on the Blu-ray, whereas on the 4K, completely natural, just like a film print, and that is the difference. So the 4K has been transferred from the original camera negative and thereby the Blu-ray, which has been taken from the 4K, but this original Blu-ray, I believe that has been a transfer of a 35mm general release print, and that makes the difference between the newer release and the older Blu-ray release. Now, there's quite a lot of film grain in some of the shots on Thelma and Louise, particularly in indoor sequences and where there's low light. Also, where there are optical shots, such as the opening titles, but there are a few fades throughout where you may think that isn't as good as it looks elsewhere. And then at the end of the scene, you see a fade from one shot to another. That's an optical. The previous Blu-ray release is not as good as you would expect as the new Blu-ray, which has come from the 4K Master. But in isolation, I would have said this is excellent and why do you need anything else? But then this 4K comes along and you look at the new releases and you think, how did you ever put up with this? But if you're happy with this, then I don't think this is one of those situations where you desperately need to upgrade and spend another $29.99 as this is on a new 4K release. But what value this pack is. It's a home video and it's another one of those. It's just like having your own personal 35mm print, except perhaps without the odd mark that comes along on a film print. But you know, some of us who like film have always appreciated film, actually appreciate those little bits of neg dust and other marks that you always see on a film print. However, as a film, I consider this one to be about as perfect as you could ever wish for. Ridley Scott's done quite a few like that, but this one, I view this more as a comedy than anything else. Yes, there's that harrowing sort of attempted rape scene that I find difficult to watch, I'm sure a lot of people do, but that's fundamental to the plot. I won't really go into the plot, I'll do the usual, I'll put the synopsis on the back of the box up on the screen, you can turn away if you want to, but it's that attempted rape that leads to what comes afterwards. However, in every film, every movie, there are always some close-up soft focus shots. This one's got quite a few of them. Don't get that confused with some problem with the cine to video transfer or the mastering process. That's not the case. That was the way this was shot on the day. There's nothing that can be done about it. And on huge screens as we saw it back in the early 90s, it wasn't noticeable or wasn't so noticeable on there because the enlargement of the image does disguise some things that go on in films. 
The aspect ratio is approximately 2.35 to 1 and it comes with DTS HD 5.1 sound. It's not the most ambitious 5.1 sound you're ever going to hear. This did start out as Dolby Stereo matrixed 4-track Dolby Stereo and the subwoofer was off for a lot of the time because that's not the nature of this film. It's more dialogue driven, comedy driven and just a great driving movie, a road movie across much of the west side of America. It had an estimated budget of $16.5 million and took at the worldwide box office $45.5 million. I didn't see it on first release but I got a second chance thanks to the National Film Theatre when they put it on in 1994 and I loved it from that moment but my wife loved it even more than I did so shortly after that I got a the NTSC laser disc don't think it was ever released in pound laser disc but this is a very good NTSC laser disc very good image quality I did have a look at one of the sides through my television recently just to check it and it stands up pretty well at around three feet wide I'm not sure it will look so good in here at around 10 feet wide but the first two sides of this are constant linear velocity and the third side on the second disc in here is constant angular velocity where you can freeze frame every frame and basically the technology that was adopted for DVD came from these laser discs. This is not anamorphic, although the anamorphic 16x9 for home video was actually developed first for laser disc, and you'll find many laser disc players, many later laser disc players, have the 16x9 button, but sadly I'd never saw that come to fruition. Maybe in Japan it did, where laser disc continued a year or two longer than the rest of the world. So we've had it on home video for an awful long time now and 30 years I suppose, getting on for 30 years and we've got quite a history with the film and so to watch it in here on this 4K disc with the most beautiful natural colours, so well defined and yes the film grain at times and the opticals do detract from what is overall very good image quality and there's one what I believe is an optical later on where there's a camera strapped to the front of the car looking back at Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon and I think in order to split the shots or get the right look on the faces I think they've optically blown up each of the ladies each of the actresses to show them one at a time and for those scenes if you're projecting it to any size at all I think you will notice and I commented that Perhaps they used a 16mm camera to strap that to the car for those shots. But I've looked it up, there's no indication that 16mm was used, but it looks like there might have been a variety of 35mm formats because not all 35mm is the same. And I didn't find conclusive evidence that this was shot entirely full frame anamorphic 35 millimeter so that could also explain why some of the shots don't look quite as good as others but don't forget the soft focus shots you might spot that was how it was on the day nothing to do with anything else just didn't quite get the focus measurement right my summary overall cinema quality on a home video disc for 29 pound 99 30 pounds or thereabouts who would have thought this would ever have been possible when we got that laser disc 30 years ago? But there we are. It's quite often good to be proven wrong that video really can be just about as good as film. Now, in other news, Stephen, who goes by the ID Castles for Eyes on YouTube, he rather kindly sent me this Super 8 double album. This was before. Laserdisc really got going before anything home video really got going. This was around 1980. This was released on Super 8. It runs for about 32 minutes, 31, 32 minutes, and it's two 400 foot reels, a cut down of Steven Spielberg's classic war comedy. And I think the way this has been cut, yes, there are some problems with the opening titles and that where you get jump cuts just to get through the opening title. So the maximum length is given over to the story. I think this probably plays better than the whole film. So thoroughly enjoyed that. And let's face it, I'll enjoy anything with Nancy Allen in it and she's in it. And um, yes, just looking as beautiful as she ever did. But he also sent me a little 50 foot reel on standard eight. Laurel and Hardy which I've yet to run but I want to run this and I thought I might shoot some video of it if anyone's interested on this rather arty little standard 8 projector 
So if anyone's interested in that, better let me know in the comments below if you fancy seeing this little Art Deco beauty running in a future video. I hope it still runs. It did the last time I put a standard 8 through it, but that was a few years ago now. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this. Until the next video, you're standing in your pizza. Now where did that come from? Oh yes. <laughs>